Hello everyone, my name is Juan Andaria from the Test Interrupting and Switching Team. Today, we will cover a packet walk for boom traffic over VXLAN using multicast replication. The purpose of this video is to understand how boom traffic is handled on each step of VXLAN forwarding. First, let's cover some terminology that will be used on this video. Boom. Boom stands for broadcast, onion unicast, and multicast traffic. BNI. BNI stands for Virtual Network Identifier. BTEP. BTEP stands for VXLAN Tunnel Endpoint. This is the topology that will be used for this example. In this example, LIV43 and LIV44 will be treated as local BTEPs, since host generating a request is directly connected to these BTEPs. BTEP45 and 46 will be treated as remote BTEPs, since they will be receiving the app request from local BTEPs. On VXLAN using multicast replication, each L2 BNI will be attached to one multicast group, which will handle boom traffic. As observed on configuration, VLAN 1501 is mapped to BNI segment 11501, which is attached to multicast group 231.1.150.1. For this example, let's follow an app request, which is a broadcast packet from host A towards host B on VLAN 1501. Now, let's take a look on how boom traffic flows. First, BTEPS IP needs to be identified to understand which IPs VXLAN will use to forward the traffic. This can be verified using command show NBE interface NBE1 detail, focusing on source interface section. With the use of VPC, VXLAN will use secondary IP to forward the traffic. Next, let's verify that the remote VTEP IP is in NBE peers table. This can be verified using command show NBE peers. Remote VTEP IP should be present on this table, as highlighted. Next, let's check ARP entries in end hosts. Up to this moment, there are no ARP entries since no ARP is being generated yet. Since no boom traffic is crossing VXLAN, SCOM ID for remote VTEPS IP will not be observed. This can be verified using command show IP route 231.1.150.1. It's expected to see SCOM ID for our VPC peer, secondary loopback. Once host date generate ARP requests, App requests will arrive to both local VTIPs, LIV43 and LIV44. This can be validated using ethanalyzer command. Please be aware that RP is pointed to CPU since LIVs have an SVI for VLAN 1501. If there's no SVI for VLAN 1501, we will need to use other kind of embedded packet captures to capture app requests. Once app requests arrive to LIV, Leave when encapsulated with VXLAN headers using VPC secondary loopback IP 10.0.1.143 as a source and L2VNI multicast group 231.1.150.1 as a destination IP. Spines will receive this traffic and forward it based on the multicast outgoing interface list. On Spines, SCOMAG for Leaf 43 and 44, VPC beta IP should be observed. This can be verified using command show IP en route 231.1.150.1. Interfaces facing remote VPC BTEP leaves 45 and 46 should be included in outgoing interface list as observed in the output. A request will be flooded to all BTEPs which are configured with the same multicast group in the L2 BNI. On remote BTEP, a request will arrive encapsulated. Span to CPU is used on this example to capture this traffic coming from spines. In the outer header, remote VPC VTEP IP will be observed as source and multicast group IP as a destination as highlighted. Also, L2 BNI will be included in VXLAN header. On the VXLAN inner header, app request with the original details will be observed. Once this packet is received by remote BTEP, SCOMAG with local BTEP IP 10.0.1.143 will be populated. 
This can be verified using command show IPM route 231.1 to 150.1. An entry for remote VPC BTEP 10.0.1.143 with interface NB1 as an egress interface should be observed. Remote BTEP will decapsulate the traffic and flood it out to all his ports that are allowing VLAN 1501. Please remember that on VPC, just one of the VPC BTEP will forward the traffic towards host. It's possible to verify which nexus is forwarding the traffic using command show IPPM internal BPC RPF source on section forwarding state. As observed on the output, NIC45 is forwarding the traffic. Finally, on remote host, ARP request will be received. This can be validated using packet capture on host B. Host B will populate its ARP table with received ARP requests and will generate a unique as ARP reply which will populate ARP entry on host A. I hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching.